people here in Brussels made no secret of the fact that Mario Monti was their favoured candidate. To what extent did that kill his electoral chances? Well, actually, we are still talking about projections uh, at the moment, not final results. So caution is needed, but a couple of points can, can already be made at this stage. Uh, one of these points is that uh, Mario Monti's centrist pro-reform coalition uh, has been doing particularly badly in this, uh, in this election. Uh, according to the projections I've seen before coming here, he was... Um, he was below 10 percent. So uh, clearly uh, probably Monty knew since the beginning when he decided to join the race that uh, uh, his presence in the electoral campaign was going to turn this into a real referendum about uh, not just him but his policies and uh, I think uh, we, we can say now he has, uh, he has lost uh, this, uh, this referendum because even opinion polls before the blackout uh, put him on 14-15 uh, uh, percent and now he seems to be below 10 percent. And it appears that many Italians have voted against austerity, according to the projections we've got at the moment. Does that perhaps tell people here in Brussels that it's time for a plan B on austerity? Italy is normally a pro-EU country, but so many people are voting against these spending cuts. Isn't it time to change the narrative a bit? Yes, exactly. Um... I think five of uh, the seven main political parties in Italy were campaigning on a pledge to put an end to human data austerity. And now, according to these projections, these parties may have got uh, over 50% of the votes. So we are looking at over half of Italians voting against austerity. And I think the political message here is clear. Uh, it will be hard to, for, for, for Brussels and other uh, Eurozone countries to uh, continue with EU mandated austerity, not just in Italy, but also in other struggling uh, southern countries. So what's and your... it will be also hard to stick to this uh, cash for uh, budget discipline blueprint that the Eurozone uh, has embraced so far. So what is the alternative? What does a plan B look like? Well, it depends, really, because uh, what we will see in, um, in the future, I think, now it's a bit too early to talk about what, the, what shape the next Italian government will take, but uh, what we will see in the future will be, I think, further clashes between the hawkish north, if you like, of the austerity-fatigued southern Eurozone. Uh, so there will be, um, I think, further talks because the request to uh, ease uh, a bit austerity and the pace of uh, deficit cuts uh, will grow and uh, Germany and other northern countries will have to face this. And uh, The Economist once described Italy as the sick man of Europe. What does the next government, whoever that may be or be made up of, need to do to cure the patient? Well, clearly, uh, the, the priority should be to push ahead with structural reforms. Priority number one, I think, should be further reform of the labour market because the technocratic government led by Mario Monti took some steps in the right direction, but a lot still needs to be done because Italy's labour market is still rigid and there is still a clear division between previous generation workers, especially in the public sector, who are overprotected compared to young generation, new generation workers who are usually put on uh, a temporary flexible uh, contracts and, and enjoy very, very little uh, protection and also more flexibility is, is, uh, is needed in the labour market in general. Uh, a second step should be uh, slimming down uh, the public administration and cutting, seriously cutting the costs of bureaucracy, uh, red tape and the cost of politics in general. And third, I think another thing that should be done is uh, a reinforcement of the rules uh, against corruption and tax evasion. Well, Vincenzo Scarpetta, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. Many thanks for joining us from London. Thank you.